Hello, everybody. This is the Chapter 2 Lecture Notes slide set. This is Part 4 of the Lecture Notes. I left off last time posing this question to you. What's the shortest geographic distance between New York and Moscow? Would it be Route A or would it be Route B? Well, you have to go look at a globe to understand this point, but actually the shortest geographic distance on the globe, and for those of you who are going to be teachers, you can demonstrate this with pieces of string. The shortest geographic distance would be to fly over Iceland, not take this big dogleg out through the, the North Atlantic. But didn't you learn in geometry that the shortest distance between any two points is a straight line? That's true. The, the, the problem is the real world, the Earth, the globe, has a curved surface. But maps are flat. So there is distortion whenever you transfer a three-dimensional globe to a, a flat piece of paper. And in, the, in this case, you, you have more aerial distortion in the higher latitudes. It's probably better to take a look at a globe to see that. It's only on a globe that you can maintain all of the globe properties. Now, I'm not going to read through all of these, and these are certainly in your, your textbook. But uh, between a, a globe and a map, now, some maps preserve these properties, and some maps don't. It entirely depends on what's called their map's projection. They may maintain or one or more of these. They may main, maintain several of these, but no map can maintain all of the globe properties. Only a globe can do that. Well, the problem with globes is you can only see one half of the world at the same time, and it's impractical to carry around a, a lot of globes, so we have to use maps, and we have to show maps on the computer screen flattened out so uh, we have to make some choices, and that's what brings up the next topic of map projections. Thus the need for a map projection. What is a map projection? Well, it's some mathematical method to transfer the three-dimensional globe to a flat surface. Okay, you take the sphere and change it to a, a flat plane or like a piece of paper. That's actually impossible. You can't do that. Well, you can't do it without distorting either the areas of things on the map, the shapes of things on the map, distance and directions. Uh, actually, cartographers do uh, make this transformation all the time, and there are thousands of map projections which exist. The cartographer chooses a projection to minimize the distortion of the globe properties, depending upon the particular purpose of the map. Now, now sometimes I, I see on various YouTube videos and clickbait videos where they'll, they'll say, you know, classrooms have been using the wrong maps for years, or most textbooks get the map of the world wrong. Well, there's no such thing as a wrong map projection. They're all mathematically derived. They're, uh, they're all true for what they are. It's just that different map projections distort in different ways. So the cartographer has to choose a map projection depending on what area is being mapped, what the purpose of the map is, what the theme of the map is. Here are just a, a quick view of some of the various map projections that are out there uh, invented by many different mathematicians and geographers. They all distort in different ways. And if, you're, if you, your goal is to show the entire world at once, 
Well, it's, it's not possible without either distorting the shapes of things, the areas of things, and distance and direction relationships. This is the idea of projecting on a map. What you kind of have to imagine is that there's a light source, in this case in the inside of the globe, and you come around with a piece of paper, and wrap it around the globe, and you turn on that light, it shines through the globe, if that was possible, and casts a shadow on the paper. And you could come along and you could trace that paper or the outline of the, of the continents and the, the meridians and the parallels and then stretch it out. Hey, you've done it. You've created a, a flat map out of a 3D globe. Well, true, you did it, but not without considerable distortion. In this case, if you're on a cylinder, uh, you're going to have... Uh, aerial distortion the further away you are from the standard parallel. What's the standard parallel? That's one of the terms in the chapter. Well, if you look in the glossary of the book, it says that the standard parallel is where the map is tangent to the globe. Well, what does that mean in English? That means that's where the map is touching the globe. So if we wrap this piece of paper uh, around that globe, it would be touching it at the equator. And along the equator, there's minimal distortion. Okay? But as you get further away from the equator, you get further away from the standard parallel, you get more and more aerial distortion in this case. Now, actual, in actuality, of course, cartographers don't use um, lamps and, and lampshades. These are mathematically derived. And it works best if you don't even notice uh, what projection type th there is. Now, you notice when somebody publishes a world map or U.S. map and they chose the wrong projection, that's noticeable. And somewhere down the bottom of the corner of the Mac, it probably tells you whose map projection you're using and whether or not it's an equivalent conformal equidistant or azimuthal projection. Well, the class of, of map projections that, that strive to maintain equal area, they're called, they have the property of equivalence, or the, they're said to be equivalent map projections. Whereas those map projections that preserve shapes of areas on the map are said to be conformal. And what do you figure equidistant projections preserve? That's right, distance. And azimuthal along the, a, uh, an azimuth, that means directional relationships are preserved. Usually most map projections are compromises that, that try to balance some of these depending on what the, the purpose is. Well, you're a young person and you want to be able to have it all in this life. But you know what you can never have? You can never have a, a map of the world that's both equivalent and conformal because you can't preserve equal area and true shape at the same time. Although there have been many attempts to do so. Now, in the, the textbook, in the new edition, they, they took a lot of the material about map projections uh, in, uh, out of the chapter and put it in an appendix, thinking, well, this is just ancillary information. Who's ever going to talk about this? I'm putting it back in the chapter. I think it's pretty important. Uh, matter of fact, I may have a discussion board uh, about the map projections that you'll have to write something up. I, I, I would agree. And like with, with this kid, uh, map projections are a, a, a pretty uh, arcane uh, subject in geography. Esoteric, I suppose. So you'd have to be a cartographer to go at a particular depth of understanding with these. There are three basic geometric projections. And you can almost imagine putting a piece of paper around a globe, a, a cylinder, or a cone, or a plane. But with mathematics, you don't have to use 
uh, paper that would sit on the outside. In mathematics, you can you could make that that plane or that cone or that cylinder pierce the earth in in various ways. And you know it gets even more complicated in that how the map will will look depending on the projection. It even matters what the light source is from, uh, whether or not it's stretched out at in infinity, it's orthographic, uh, from the center of the globe, it's said to be mnemonic, or uh, at, at the source on the opposite side of the Earth, uh, it's antipode. Well, this is the famous Mercator projection. Students always ask me, uh, how do you pronounce this word? It's it's Mercator, uh, after the, the famous cartographer, uh, Geraldus Mercator. It's Mercator. It, it rhymes with potato, uh, don't you say? All right, well, it's, it's a famous one. It's a fairly straightforward projection, and it was used a lot for navigation. Uh, the Mercator projection has been much maligned uh, in education because they say, well, it, it, you know, you have so much aerial distortion in the high latitudes. They say, well, you know, Greenland looks to be larger than South America here, when in actuality, Greenland is less than a tenth the size of South America. You can verify that with looking at the real world uh, approximated by this globe. Yes, on a globe, Greenland's about a tenth the size of South America. But we want to look at a, the whole world on a, on a posted map here. So as you get away from the standard parallel, in this case, the, the equator, zero degrees latitude, you get more and more aerial distortion. So a lot of teachers say that well, students will get the wrong idea about the sizes of countries. Students will, will think that, that Greenland is larger and more important than it really is. Uh, another way to, to show the stretched out part of it is that they have the star on here. That would be if you, if you drew that star on a globe and then projected it to Mercator. This is how much distortion you'd have. Something else about this Mercator cylindrical is the scale. You know, you have one scale that you use at the equator, another scale that you use at 30 degrees latitude, another scale you use at 60 degrees latitude. So certainly that doesn't fit the globe properties. Do the meridians and parallels intersect at right angles? Yes, they do. It preserves that map, that globe property very well. Um, do the meridians converge at the poles? No, they don't. That's one of the things about this projection. Are the parallels just that? Are they parallel lines to each other? Yes, they are. So there's things that the Mercator does right, and there's the, the things that the Mercator distorts when you look at that list of globe properties. Uh, a lot of people argue about, well, you're not showing countries the same size, and this little animation shows, okay, yeah, in actuality, Greenland is about a tenth the size of South America. One of the, uh, the, the, the purposes of the, of the Mercator uh, projection is that a, a line drawn on it is a line of constant compass bearing. Uh, uh, but that's not always the direct route from one part of the world to the other. The shortest distance between any two points on the globe is what's known as a great circle or a great circle route. It's actually pretty complicated. If you have an origin point and a destination, let's see, if you have an origin point here, let's say, and a destination point here, and then you pass a plane through the center of the globe, uh, well, then on the outside of the globe, uh, that's all along a, a great circle. And a great circle is the shortest distance between those two points. Uh, shown here, for example, flying from Chicago to Hong Kong or the other way. Um, you know, you wouldn't take this big dog leg out through the Pacific Ocean. The shortest way is to fly over the, the Arctic. Now, it depends. It depends on whose territory you're flying over. 
you know, you're flying over Russia or China and so forth. Sometimes you can be flying, flying over uh, unfriendly territory, but for the most part, airline pilots try to approximate a great circle route. What's a rum line? Well, a rum line, sometimes in some textbooks, it's called a loxodrome. It means the same thing. It's a, it's a line of constant compass bearing. So you start out the origin of A, and you, you go out on a, a bearing of 55 degrees, and you, you end up with, with B. And that <clears throat> a route like that will cross the meridians at the same angle. Here's another example from the appendix. Miller's cylindricals uh, also stretches things out as well. And here are some examples of conic projections. How about put a cone on the world? Or how about many cones? You know, you could uh, cut up a lot of cones and where the, the map touches the globe, where the... <laughs> standard parallel is. What, what if you did that with a lot of different cones and then you cut them all out and stuck them all together? Or what if like a magician you could pass the cone through the the globe and so the the paper sticks out in two different places, two different standard parallels? Well you'd, you'd minimize distortion uh, along those parallels and so uh, that's good if you're not trying to show the entire world. Say you want to just show one region, or a lot of your maps of the United States are on a conic projection. Most books that show maps of the United States, especially the lower 48 of the United States, again, it works best if you if you don't even notice this, because somewhere down in the, the corner of the map, they, they probably tell you what projection it is and who's conic or polyconic projection is. And so this minimizes distortion here. So in, in cases when you have a, a, a mapped area that, that has a long east-west dimension, like, like North Carolina is, is one. I, most of the maps you see posted around here of North Carolina, they're on some type of conic projection. And a very common one is uh, Albers equal area conic projection. And sometimes you need to measure things from a point. So some type of equidistant projection would work. Uh, you can see how this one would be like looking at a regular globe, looking at the top down, but also you can do this mathematically as, as well. Now this is a, an interesting projection. It looks like some type of bad dream or maybe some type of Salvador Dali painting. Uh, well, there's something that's that's good about this one. Uh, it, if you page back and look at the Mercator example, again, it, it shows that, that the great circle route was curved and the rum line was straight. Okay, uh, well, this particular projection is mathematically derived in such a way that if you draw a straight line from your... Uh, from your point that the, the, of, of origin here, you draw a straight line on here, it makes a great circle route. See, all these other, these, these classroom maps we have hanging around in your book, if you draw a straight line on those maps, it's not the shortest distance. I hate to tell you. Right? Yeah, you'd think it would be. But on this one, on this specially designed map projection, you draw a straight line, it is the shortest distance between those two points. But unfortunately, then the lines of constant compass bearing are, uh, are curved. All right, uh, so that's a, a, a big difference. Now, Mercator's projection was used a lot for navigation, and that they knew that the, the Great Circle route uh, on a Mercator projection would be curved. And what they would do is that if they were going to a destination, they would connect together a number of rum line segments to approximate a, a great circle. How about this one? This one is common in Goods World Atlas, very common atlas. Uh, goods uh, homeless line 
projection. You know, you kind of break the world up and kind of looks like uh, you, you peeled an orange. Matter of fact, one person did peel an orange this way. Uh, and that's okay. It depends on what, again, it, it depends on, on what you want to show. This specially designed projections, it's, it's actually a, a paste up of two different types of uh, of projections and you know it looks like you know you pulled the earth apart well if what you want to show is is something at the world level you know a dot density map of world population that would do just fine however if you wanted to show things like you know migration routes across the ocean or international shipping and and so forth or you know traveling to antarctica or something like that then you would probably choose a, a different projection for that. But this is also very, very common, and you see this all the time in education. Well, here's one uh, that I actually brought this up in back when I was giving you lecture notes on Chapter 1, uh, Fuller's projection. Uh, here with, with this one, this is actually the preferred map projection in showing maps uh, maps distributions of the world uh, all at once because it it minimizes both shape and aerial distortion pretty well yeah you, you look at greenland and south you know i always say uh, for the acid tests uh, look at greenland and south america is greenland less than a tenth the size of south america okay well it is uh, on this but uh, the thing is though you're your north, south, east, and west doesn't have a lot of meaning here. Well, it does have meaning. It, if you're a PhD in geography, you know you know where the, the North Pole is. You, you know where the, the South Pole is. So this is just one way to show the entire world at, at once that would minimize both aerial and shape distortion. A pretty good compromise. Okay. And, oh, here's a question. How much of the globe are you able to view at once? Well, only half. And that's another one of the reasons of why we use maps instead of globes. If you want to show the every you want to show the world, well, there's the world globe, but you have to keep turning it around. World map, you can show it all at once. In the textbook appendix, it has this uh, cartogram it's not really a, a map they, they put it under the the category of projections but they they really should not this is certainly not a a map projection it may be a, a map a transformation or a, a map distortion but it's not one of the recognized map projections what this is though it's kind of cute it's a example cartogram um, a researcher did a study of the places mentioned in country music lyrics. Okay, some of you may like country music, and there's some country music I like myself. Well, you know, uh, there's a lot of country songs that, that, that mention, you know, growing up in Tennessee and Tennessee valleys and so forth, and Texas and old, even old Mexico. Uh, she left me and went to California or something like that. And the, the deep south states, uh, Louisiana is, is, is mentioned in songs, and the Carolinas. But how many times is uh, New Hampshire mentioned in country music lyrics, country music songs that, uh, that, 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 that talk about uh, <laughs> Connecticut landscapes not not too often so sure, they're they're shown very small and the other ones where that get mentioned a lot in country music like Tennessee and Texas they're, they're ballooned up so it's kind of a, a a cute way to show information with what's called a cartogram which we'll take a look at some more later now there have been a lot of arguments in education as to find the the best projection to portray the world because there's so many teachers that didn't like the Mercator cylindrical projection. So one of the ones that was suggested was this, the, the Peters projection. Uh, 
Because here, the, the idea is, well, you're not showing the European countries larger than they really are uh, in relation to the African and other equatorial countries. And that's true. You know, if you, well, again, my acid test, you know, look at Greenland versus South America. Okay, Greenland's less than a tenth the size of South America. It gets the areas right. But what does it get wrong? Well, they had to squish Greenland. They had to squish uh, Russia, North America, and Alaska down quite a bit. It had, they had to elongate out these tropical countries. So, yeah, you would say that students would no longer get the wrong idea about the sizes of countries. Students would get the wrong idea about the shapes of countries. And also in the appendix, they looking at some examples for for these equal area, conformal, and equidistance. The whole thing, the whole trade-off is: can you balance equal area with shape? And here's one map projection that does a a pretty good job. National Geographic had a big contest in the 1960s to come up with what's the best map projection for showing the world. And the cartographer Robinson, who I met one time, uh, was the winner with this. And he came up with a, a pretty good compromise. And most of the world maps that we have hanging around the classroom, they're on Robinson projection. So they, it's a pretty good compromise. Well, is, is, is Greenland a little bit bigger than it, it should be? Yeah, but I can sleep at night. Is it, stretch, is it stretched out a little bit more in the, uh, in the high latitude? Yeah, but I can pretty well sleep at night because of that. It's a, it's a pretty good balance. All right, so you want shapes to conform to what they, they look like in reality. Uh, you also need equal area if you're going to do quantitative mapping. If you're going to do things like like show you know death rate by by country, uh, you know death rate per capita or death rate per thousand, um, and then by country, it's it's probably a pretty good idea to to give it a, a map projection that looks somewhat equal area. And I suggest the Robinson projection, certainly over Peter's projection.